thirsty riding a skateboard. Me too. This is a job for Kool-Aid. Hey, Kool-Aid! I'm coming for you, laddie! That's right. This one's about the Kool-Aid man, Kool Kool and himself. It's time for a rant. We've waited long enough. We've seen it long enough. We've suffered long enough. I've fed enough, it's time to finally dissect the bullshittery that's the newest warrior in Smite. And if you want to tell me that I'm wrong beforehand, before you've listened to all this stuff, then just let me show you this game, alright? The background footage that you'll see later will show you exactly this game. I have not played Kukula much at all, I have barely any experience on the god. And I've played him in a game where the matchmaking, for once, was actually pretty damn even. Look at the stats here. Look at the Smite Guru score. The disparity here is very, very low. And the last player with a hidden profile is a player that was already level 30 one year ago. So this guy wasn't inexperienced either. We actually had the one not a level 30 player. The elo here was absolutely fine. And look at the stats. With a guard that I'm not playing, that I'm not experienced playing. Against players that should be around the same level of play. This is actually not okay, I'm not joking. This is not a joke rant, this is a legit rant. This god is just not acceptable in his current state. And he's been like that for way too long. And that is why for Kukulin we have three tiers of bullshit. The normal bullshit, the advanced bullshit, and the secret bullshit. We'll get to that later. So, let's begin with the normal bullshit. Kukulin has absolutely no mana cost. Because he doesn't even have mana. Instead he has rage, almost as much rage as I have seeing him on the enemy team. But if you're an absolute idiot and you invest your gold into mana and MP5, you actually still get rewarded because you get a percentage cut of health and HP5 if you buy the wrong items. So Harry is literally going, like, you're a little dumb, but it's okay, we'll help you anyways. Next thing, have you seen his leap? It's super easy, it's super quick, hardly any charge up time, you can literally immune abilities with it, and also it is super easy to hit, because... Different from Fafnir, where you have a cone in front of you that you need to precisely aim in order to get the disarm off. He gets off the damage in a line in front of the leap and in a circle around the leap. Oh, and then the guy gets a free physical mystical mail with scaling, although it does have a bit of a shorter range. Oh, that's a downside, right? He has a shorter range. Well, let's make up for that by giving a movement speed buff of 5% so that you can definitely stick to your enemies anyways. But hey, Kukulin has low scalings, am I right? So it's all fair. It's only like 40% to 60%. Who cares about low scalings when his base damage is still high enough to walk over anyone who comes in his path? We'll look at this damage in a second. But to take that away beforehand, the ironic thing is that it's actually beneficial for him because it means that it opens more options for a more defensive build and damage options are not as important because you will still get your damage out because it's high base damage. And the base damage is so high that you don't even need to build pen, you can still hit like a truck anyways. Because you also get a ton of basics in between because you have extra movement speed, hey. So let's look at the damage, right? He's got four damaging abilities in his base kit. Do you have any idea how many gods don't have that? So that already gives him a damage edge over others. But let's compare the values. Compared to Hercules, Kukulin's one has 315 base damage. Hercules has 365. Alright, he also has higher scaling, but we talked about that. Scaling doesn't really matter that much when you're building that much power anyways. And then we have the three. 285 on Kukulin, but there's 260 base on Hercules' pull. So Hercules' pull actually has less damage already. But on top of that, Kukulin has an extra damaging ability that Hercules doesn't have because Hercules gets his health heal instead, which will definitely not do as much in team fights, and it's also easier to counter that. And then his one also gets reduced in cooldown for leveling it. And looking at teamfight capabilities, Kukulin clearly has the better ult. So Kukulin has the better ult, the better third ability, and enough room for items with better generation anyways, because he can completely ignore MP5, so he is just the better Herc. And then you have his ultimate, the Gay Bulge, what a glorious weapon. It looks small, but it's actually quite big. Well, that's strange, what am I talking about here? Well, we're talking about his abilities, his ultimate, alright? That thing may look like a small circle radius, but it's actually the range of a Geb ultimate. It's a massive setup, and it's a knock-up, which is usually stronger in most situations. It's also on a 75 seconds cooldown, as opposed to Geb's 90 seconds cooldown. His one literally has so many effects that Hyrus forgot to put the range on the ability description. There's just so much in there that like, oh, wait, do we need to add anything else? Ah, nah, I think we're good. So I guess it's maybe around 45 range, I can't actually tell exactly, but something like that. 
The range on his 3 says 35, so like, oh, well, that's a short range ability. But it's not even true, because it's actually 70, because you can leap forward from your position. And then the line targeter will go further, so you don't even have to go at, as close to the enemy as it sounds like. And on the topic of range, and this could easily be advanced bullshit already because it's just super stupid. This guy on top of all of that also has 16 units basic attack range. And if you look at his attack swings, that doesn't even make sense. He's just hitting the air. You know which gods get something like that? A Willish as a special perk in her kit because certain of her abilities are conditionally tied to basic attacks. So it's super important for her to land them. Or Bellona, who only gets it on one of her weapons as one special effect. Now, Kukulin gets it all the time because he totally needs it with the rest of the kit. Like, have you ever wondered why it's so easy to hit a basic with Kukulin when you have 5% extra movement speed and you get 16 units basic attack range? You can just spam away. It's so easy. There's no reason for that. And talking about no reason for that, we're talking about advanced bullshit. He's got base regeneration up to 25 rage by default so you know you could literally use your one and your three or your ult and your one or your ult and your three or your two and your one or your two and your three all the time what is the point of having such a system where you need to manage your rage when you can easily use half of your kit at any point anyways including your strongest ability there's no need to do much rage management. And that brings us to the anger management. Anger management is something that I need right now. Kukulin does not need it. 25 base rage, and then if you hit your abilities right, you can gain up to 18 plus 18 plus 36 in one ability rotation without the two. That's 97 rage for you. In a cluster team fight, it literally takes you one ability rotation minus the two to get your rage up. And I still spam the two like an idiot and it doesn't matter because you still get enough rage anyways. And did I mention that for some stupid reason his one stuns minions for two seconds, allowing him for much more stupid aggressive plays with no punishment and has 50% healing reduction? Why does he even have healing reduction in his kid at all? It just doesn't make any sense with anything. It's literally like, hey, let's slap another random extra effect on that kit because we didn't feel like it had enough effects yet. Oh, and then we also have to mention that his whole kit has extremely good synergy with Gladiator's Shield, an already overtuned item. He can spam away abilities with no mana cost and gets healed all the time. And Gladiator's Shield is something you keep until late game because it's so good. And it gives you more cooldown reduction so you can spam even more. So you have an overtuned guard that benefits more from an overtuned item than anyone else. Nice. But as I promised, there is a third layer of bullshit. If you think that Kukulin sounds strong so far, you haven't heard anything yet. Because you may have noticed something. I left something out on purpose. And this kid is still super strong and has a lot of things that other gods don't have. I completely left out the fact that he can go berserk and get multiple other benefits from that as well. And what does Berserk actually mean? He gets an entire new set of abilities, especially full of CC, because he gets a root, he gets a knockback, he gets a fear, and then he still has the ultimate of his normal form that also has CC, so he has four CCs in total that are all really strong. And all these abilities deal damage again with no mana cost attached, so you basically get a free CD reset for the whole kit. Well, wow, that's absolutely disgusting, Duke. I cannot imagine that he could get any more than that on top of that. Oh no, he just gets plus 45 bonus power at max level as well, because why not? Oh, and also, did I forget to mention that because he isn't tanky enough or whatever, he also gets a bonus shield with up to 401 extra shield health. And what does shield health mean? It's not affected by kin size, it's not affected by Soul Reaver, he does not have to care about that at all. And there's something I actually forgot to mention in the earlier bullshit section, but we'll double it up right here without mentioning it beforehand. He has CC immunity twice on a warrior, because his ultimate makes him CC immune in each of the stances. Literally, a Willish or Kali are not allowed to have full CC immunity on their ultimates because it would make them way too strong because you couldn't shut them down anymore. And you have all these gods that have to be immobile to get the CC immunity like Ra or even Hercules. But no, Kukulin, he gets it for both his ultimates and he can still somewhat move while using them. 
But I did mention how the CD on his ult is 75 seconds, which is already not very long. Did you realize that his other ult has a separate cooldown, so you can actually use it twice in the time? And to finish this off, let's look at the disaster that I could call his patch notes. The first patch for him was 4.12, actually some quality of life improvements, some fixes, that was fine. But there were also buffs in this patch, they were absolutely unwarranted because the guy was barely tested at that point and barely played so far. He already got an extra health conversion for his mana from 10% to 15% for no reason whatsoever. And his war cry got the damage increase from 360 to 475 base damage with an increased scaling from 50% to 65, even though it was specifically made in a way that he wouldn't deal ridiculous damage with both his ults being used successively. In 4.16 he was already in a pretty good spot and he got a buff. Healing reduction increased from 40 to 50% just to bring it more online. Yeah, just add another 10% to bring it more online, whatever. In 4.19, he got a little bit of a nerf to his shield on Berserk. In return, his rage gain across all abilities and team fights through hitting guards was drastically increased for Barb Spear, Salmon Leap, and Spear of Mortal Pain. Hey, just you know, gaining 16 rage per guard hit for swinging my gay bulge. Let's go. In 4.22, the dude actually got some nerfs. He got some shield reduction because the shield was super annoying, but in the end that reduction is not as drastic as it sounds, and he got a movement speed decrease from 10% to 5% on Vent Anger. The rest of his kit remains the exact same, my voice is dead, I'm running out of anger from my Berserk film, this video is over. Thank you guys for watching, if you're from Hyrus, please nerf Kukulin, if you're somebody else who's new to the channel, feel free to click the sub button, maybe the bell, it really helps me out, and gives you the chance to maybe win some codes in the description. Follow me on Twitter at DukeslothTV to see more shit posting about Kukul and the likes. See you for the next one tomorrow. Dukesloth, out.